Today, we're going to be talking about some performance wins specifically on EXT4 today. This wonderful file system has received a bunch of updates ahead of the Linux kernel version 6.16. A lot of you EXT4 users are going to be excited about these updates. Let's jump into some of the latest and greatest updates to this file system. First off, we have a breakdown of new features and performance improvements to start out this commit. Some of those include fast commit performance improvements, multi FS file system block atomic write support for big allocation of file systems, and probably the most important improvement here are the large folio support for regular files. We're gonna get into this a little bit more here in a minute, but let's talk about these. So fast commit performance improvements, all this really means is we're gonna get a speed up on how quickly the file changes are applied and saved safely to disks. This makes for writing data more efficiently, and especially when you have small changes that need to occur often. For this one here, the multi file system block atomic write support for big allocation of file systems is going to allow larger chunks of data to be written all at once. Without risking partial writes, this applies specifically to big allocation setups, which is a setup that groups blocks together for better performance when working with larger files. But again, the one that's going to improve things the most is this ability to be able to handle bigger memory chunks when reading and writing. We're gonna be getting into the actual performance improvements that not only improves overhead, but improves speed. We have benchmarks for this. So it's quite exciting for us EXT4 users as a majority of Linux users are defaulted to using ext4 when they set up their Linux distributions as large folio support for regular files has been something a lot of different file systems have been focused on, including ButterFS, one I covered recently, and how they got a performance boost based on working on large folio support as well. We have others like BcacheFS and XFS all making big strides in large folio support. Some of you may be asking, why is ext4 so widely used and the default of many many linux distributions well let's talk about it by first understanding a little bit of history as it is very interesting how ext4 actually spawned off from you guessed it ext3 well here it is ext4 was initially a series of backward compatible extensions to ext3 many of them originally developed by cluster file systems what a hilarious name as this situation was an entire cluster file for the Looster file system between 03 and 06, meant to extend storage limits and add other performance improvements. However, other Linux kernel developers opposed accepting the extensions to ext3 for stability reasons and proposed to fork the source code of ext3, rename it as ext4 and perform all the development there without affecting existing ex3 users the proposal was accepted and on the 28th of june 06 theodore zoe's the xt3 maintainer announced the new plan of development for ext4 and with this interesting history we now have a stable and reliable file system called ext4 which is widely supported has great performance for everyday workloads doesn't have any special requirements unlike things like ButterFS or XFS that need extra tuning or at least a basic configuration file to run. And it is the default for many, many Linux distributions, including Debian, Ubuntu, Arch Linux, and others. And when it comes to competition like ButterFS, which does have some benefits over ext4, for example, taking snapshots and checksumming makes it great for some Linux distributions like OpenSUSE and Fedora, which have chosen to use that, or XFS, which is a favored file system for enterprise and server systems. And ZFS is great for compression and snapshots, often used in NAS or heavy storage setup. But ext4 is, again, that sweet spot that has good enough performance, no special requirements, and is stable and reliable. Again, it's been being developed since 06, and today remains the most commonly used file system on Linux because it's fast and reliable, and has been developed over the last two decades. Now we're getting into something called stupendous performance results. But before we do, take a moment, go below and subscribe. You wouldn't want to miss another video like this. YouTube can get finicky. Also smash that like button on the way back up. You'll find something interesting here as Theodore Zo is still one of the lead maintainers here for ext4. Over 20 years, this person has been helping develop the file system. And it's wonderful to see that kind of care and devotion go into maintaining an open source file system as the original goal here was to just extend ext3 not to replace it and replace it they did 
as this new project, well, not new anymore, was totally redesigned and highlights how the open source communities not only manage change, but allow for innovation. Anyways, let's talk about that stupendous performance update. That's a 37% improvement on large sequential IO workload. That's actually pretty impressive as there are also the usual bug fixes and cleanups. And in order to understand that, the kernel test robot noticed a 37.7 improvement in the FS mark file systems per second on this specific commit. Then it shows us the test case here, which again shows us that enabling the large folio support has boosted speed on ext4. The details here are that the patch now supports large memory chunks, which are known as folios in regular files. And the test used is called FSMark, which measures how many files per second the system could create. And based on that test case, what they saw is file creation was 37.7% faster when using this latest support. The test environment here is of course using ext4 on a Intel Xeon Platinum CPU with 96 threads, 128 gigs of RAM. Don't you all wish you had that? The file sizes include four megabyte files. In total, there was 24 gigabytes written. There were no forced syncs, so we just tested pure throughput. And that's how we got this 37.7% increase, which is a big potential performance win for real world workloads. Let's actually dive a little deeper into the statistics here. As Zhang Yi posted, since almost all of the code paths in ext4 have already been converted to use folios, there isn't much additional work required to support large folios. This series completes the remaining work and enables large folios for regular files on ext4 with the exception of f severity, fs crypt, and data journal mode. So the three exceptions here that this will not work with, again, F severity, which is a feature that adds file integrity verification, like checksumming to detect tampering, use on encrypted files or file system crypt, and anywhere where a data journal is set in ext4 mode that journals both data and metadata for maximum crash safety. Those are the three cases where this will not work, but regardless, this is the actual performance result on different types of reads and writes and different storage devices. I use the same test script from the IO map series, need to drop the mount opt parameters on mount opt, run FIO tests and on the same machine with the Intel Xeon Gold 6240 CPU with 400 gigs of system RAM, 200 gigs of RAM disk and four terabytes of NVMe SSD disk, both compared with the base IO map and large folio changes. Now they're just showing off their systems. <laughs> Anyways, with the buffer read and write, it's quite fascinating as we see major improvements in what we call whole RAM disk and NVMe. So think of whole as sparse files with gaps. A RAM disk is going to be a memory backed disk, which is very fast. And finally the NVMe, a sweet spot kind of in between for things like solid state drives. IOPS here are the input output operations per second, the higher the better. And BW just means bandwidth in megabytes per second. Again, the higher, the better. So we have two methods that we're testing here. We have the IO map plus large folio versus the base and base plus large folio. All this means here is this is a newer IO method that includes larger memory chunks. And then we have the base, which is just the regular ext4 file system with the new large folio support, which includes that larger memory chunk processing. And then finally, all compared to the base, which is just standard ext4. So the key takeaways here is more bandwidth, anywhere from 29 upwards of 67% improvement when it comes to the sparse files with gaps. On RAM disk, we see anywhere from 11% to 36% gain. And finally on NVMEs, still impressive, anywhere between a percent to 8% increase. Using these large folios to boost read speed significantly, again, up to 67% faster at the extreme case, these gains are awesome for virtual files and RAM back storage, but even on SSDs, which slightly benefit. Same thing happens during the write process. This is where we get even larger improvements. Almost across the board, we see improvements, except in some small cases, for example, when we have really small pages, for example, the 4K write pages, well, then we see a negative 3%, which is a decrease in speed and bandwidth, which is not a big deal as across the board here in caching, we see a, up to 167% improvement depending on the block size here. 
one megabyte block size. But let's talk about massive block sizes. Well, 64K, 144% improvement and 125% improvement. Let's go down to the NVMe storage devices as they didn't see as big of an improvement as others. They still saw massive improvements at the one megabyte block size. We saw 168%, fascinating. As these are massive improvements to the EXT4 file system when it comes to dealing with large block sizes, especially when we're writing. I'm super excited for this one as it's coming with Linux kernel 6.16. We're just ahead of getting this update and this is going to improve a lot of devices that use the file system. Now, this is not the only updates to the file system coming in Linux kernel 6.16 but is one of the main ones. If you're interested in ButterFS, I do have a different video on this. I'm gonna post a link in the description below. If you're enjoying this, you're gonna enjoy that one as well. But let's get into some of the other updates and improvements that we're going to be getting and break down what those mean. So there are also the usual bug fixes and cleanups, and those include avoiding W format security warning. This is just to fix a compiler warning that keeps showing up about unsafe use of formatted strings like printf, not a big deal. Only dirty folios when data journaling regular files. Dirting a folio means making a chunk of memory set to be changed, so it will be written to a disk. This change makes sure that ext4 can properly mark memory as dirty when needed, specifically when using regular files and data journaling. It avoids extra work for the file system and improves performance. We also have use of the write back iteration and the ext4 journaled submit inode data buffers. This switches ext4 to use a newer model and method for writing file data that can be journaled that will be tracked for safety in case of crashes. And it likely just makes the code cleaner and improves performance or consistency. And since we got a lot of commits here for ext4 from the rest of these users, here's nine from Harshad. I'm just gonna generalize here. The main focus here is to improve performance and stability of the fast commits feature, which is a feature that speeds up journaling on small file changes. The biggest changes here are the rework of that fast commit path for better efficiency and just logic clarity, as these fast commits are key in speeding up file operations. Hopefully we see some performance improvements because of this in the future, as it's a majority of cleanup. We have fixed calculations for credits for extent tree modification. This is used when growing files or adding new blocks and it prevents rare transaction errors or overflows from occurring during file expansion. Another one is to fix the data race null pointer dereference in the JBD2 journal dirty metadata. This helps because it increases stability, especially under heavy IO workloads or under multi-threaded situations. We had quite a few from Ritesh here at IBM who introduced the new interface to safely write multiple blocks at once. Also in added internal flags and helper functions to query and manage block writes, updated documentation on how atomic writes and related flags work, and finally cleaned up and renamed flags for clarity. Hopefully this all helps in avoiding corruption and applications and databases or virtual machines. We have the fix for a length overflow, which again prevents subtle corruption or crashes when working with small file systems. Zheng Yi has the large folio support and caching safety, which we've already talked about and looked at some of the performance updates as we read through the results here on their specific commit and is probably the most significant in last commit here, which enabled those large folios and gave us that great boost of performance by reducing memory management overhead. Super exciting to see all this, as now the large folio support has been fully enabled for regular files, thanks, thanks to Zhang Yi. As ext4 gets updated ahead of Linux kernel version 6.16, it's going to make the file system faster, more reliable, and give us more modern support for things like the large folios. Whether you're a dev, casual user, or an admin, these updates that we've covered are going to improve performance and stability on your Linux system if you're using ext4, which a lot of distributions still do. If you enjoy updates like this, don't forget to go below, subscribe, and smash that like button for me so it gets out to more people. You made it to the end. You're a true fan. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in another. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.